The history of East Tennessee is a catalog of heroes. Great men, yes, but they had faults and weaknesses too, just like the rest of us. Nowhere is this more true than in the feud between John Sevier and Andrew Jackson. It all began in 1803 here on the streets of Knoxville, which was then the state capital. An argument broke out between the two of them. Heated words were exchanged, words that could not easily be taken back. In those days, there was only one sure way to settle a dispute. Did challenge each other to a duel. And uh, at that time, they had a state law that you could not fight a duel on state uh, own property, I mean, uh, the state of Tennessee. Roan County historian Babe Parker has been telling the story of the Jackson Severe duel for years. The Indians had this one mile square that was not part of the state of Tennessee because it had not been ceded. So Jackson and Severe said, well, we'll fight at Southwest Point. That's not a part of the state. Judge Jackson arrived at Fort Southwest Point in Kingston and waited for his rival to show himself. At 36, Andrew had already bested many men at pistols. Having to wait for days on end had driven Jackson to the edge of his patience. He was ready for this contest to be over. At dawn, he set out for Knoxville in search of his enemy, whom he would meet soon enough. John Sevier was already en route to Southwest Point when he encountered the enraged Jackson. Governor Sevier was nearly 60, but he was still a passionate fighter. Andrew Jackson hoped to build a career by facing men in battle. Now seemed a good time to begin. In a holler just outside Kingston, East Tennessee's favorite sons prepared to end their differences once and for all. You dirty, scurrilous rascal! Don't ever challenge me, sir! Severe, mad with fury, hell. drew Just his trusty on. saber. But doing so dramatically affected his horse, and history for that matter, because the startled horse bolted and ran away with the governor's dueling pistols. Nevertheless, Jackson's pistols were drawn. Severe's second drew on Jackson. Jackson's second drew on Severe's. It was a standoff. Well, he jumped behind a tree and told Jackson, said, You wouldn't shoot a naked man, would you? Meaning he didn't have his guns. So uh, they quarreled on there for about 30 minutes and finally got on the horses and ran off and rode on off. As I say, rode off into the sunset. But I've often thought that that horse was really the hero of the day because if either one of those men had, had been shot, it would have changed the whole course of history. History is equal portions of greatness and folly, seasoned with a large dose of chance. The history of East Tennessee is no exception. It is sobering to realize that the lives of East Tennessee's greatest heroes were influenced by the swift legs of a startled horse.